Hey strugglers, did you watch PBS as a kid or were you rich? I spent my days as a young boy solving math problems on Cyber Chase, stressing about whether Cliffhanger would ever get off that dang cliff, plotting how I could get rid of Caillou and make it look like an accident. But my all-time favorite show was always Zoom. It was a variety show for kids where they taught you about science, arts and crafts, recipes, 9-11, fun games. Apparently it originally aired in the 1970s, but I wasn't born yet. So that doesn't count. They revamped it when I was a kid and it quickly became my favorite show. I don't know if you've been paying attention over the years, but I didn't have cable until I was in middle school, so PBS was my jam. Thinking back, I've referenced Zoom in like five or six videos on this channel too, so. This was kind of important to me. Okay, this video was a long time coming. Nobody's gonna take this away from me. As a kid, I'd be all cozied up on the sofa, blanky in one hand, munching on a little snack with the other. Then all of a sudden, they'd hit me with... Coming up next, it's Zoom. Oh, frick yeah. Come on and Zoom. Zoom. Come on and Zoom. Zoom, 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 Zoom. Like I said, Zoom was all about teaching kids how to do neat stuff. Want a fun new game to play with your friends? Zoom's got you. Want to learn how to make slime at home? Zoom's got you. Want to speak the most annoying fake language ever created and drive your parents crazy? Zoom, why did you... You shouldn't have done that one. <laughs> so many parents must have hated Zoom because of this. Kids running around the house sounding like they're malfunctioning all the time. Welcome to ZO6M. Welcome to them. Guys, we've only been rolling for like five seconds. I think we can do another take, right? The whole show is hosted by these kids who call themselves the Zoomers. For the majority of the show, the kids were given some guidance on what to do and say. But other than that structural outline, they kind of let them loose to fill in the gaps themselves. It was like curb your enthusiasm for PBS kids. <laughs> we have to try to get the hula hoop around the circle while holding hands. Wow. Yeah, yeah. the trick is you can't stop holding it. Yeah, so which way are we going to send it around? I think I know how to do that. Yeah. I think the idea is that you want to step through it. Yep, that's good. Talk it out. This is a pretty tricky one, so you know, want to walk through it mentally first. Okay, so say step through it. And then, and then, and then. Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, that's awesome. I've done this one before. Oh, guys. Buzz has done this one before. Good thing too, because they needed help on that. And now, Kaylee's gonna show you how to make strawberry sundae. Make sure that before you do this, you wash your hands. Some sugar? Whoa, it's a lot of sugar. <laughs> Just unfiltered honesty. Today we'll be making dirt dessert. I see the crew bought generic brand Oreos. Those will be tasty. And oh, look, did you pick these gummy worms up at the gas station? Pretty firm. Mmm, leathery. When I tell you this show had a grip on my childhood, just about every segment that we saw on TV, my siblings and I would beg our parents to let us do. Mom, we gotta make spider crackers because Caroline did it, Mom. Hey dad, can we build a Rube Goldberg machine? Or, or you can build it and I'll watch you do it. Did you know that you can bounce balls in a stream of moving air? All you need is a hair dryer and a small lightweight ball. Put a small ball in a stream of moving air and watch. It's just Excuse me, what? You can even try moving your hair I can't hear you, Kaylee. Mouth. Kaylee, the hair dryer's too loud. That actually reminds me of something really important I was gonna tell you guys. Um, the other... <laughs> Okay, wait, jokes aside, this is really sick. <laughs> no oh, this is sick. See, this show is just so great. Look at all the things you learn. My most vivid memory from this entire show, okay, most of what I remember is only from season three, but out of that, my most vivid memory is one of their science segments. A viewer wrote in and challenged the Zoomers to build a dome out of newspapers that could hold their body weight. So we need to make four more of those big triangles. Ooh, this is gonna take us a long time. And then once we tape them, like loosen up a little bit, uh -huh. and then we can tape each like little section oh, okay. together until That'll take us a long time. At what point does this just become child labor, guys? Can't get any help from the crew here? Todd, you wanna roll some newspapers with us? No? You know what, that's okay. 
The literal children got it covered, guys. Where are the rest of the Zoomers? This is such a big project and they only had Caroline and Kenny working on it by themselves? Oh, but I suppose it takes three kids to decorate a baked potato. They were probably pretty tired from that still. Nope. Nope. Almost. So in the end, they couldn't even get the structure to hold her. How anticlimactic. There is something kind of charming about having the kids do everything by themselves and not having an adult step in when something seems like it's going wrong. It's made by kids for kids. And if something doesn't work, they're just like, well, mission failed. We'll get them next time. Wrong. Then I could be able to go on top, but you can go inside. Oh yeah. Good job. Woo. This is so wholesome. <laughs> oh, there was this cursed segment called Fanny Dooley, and it went something like this. Play along if you'd like. So there's this lady named Fanny Dooley. She's a real opinionated goof, if you ask me. She always loves going to the pool in the summer, but she hates going to the beach. And when she's getting out of the pool, she'll use the ladder, but not the stairs. She's also a bit of a freak, because when she's laying out tanning, she wears the bottoms but no top. So what's the deal with Fanny Dooley? What's going on there? Why is she such a weirdo? Well, if you haven't guessed it yet, Fanny Dooley only likes things that have double letters in the word. I used to stump my friends with that one all the time. I was a bit of a wild child. <laughs> Browsing through these episodes, there are so many things that I did as a kid and I haven't done them in so long. I want to. I gotta try some of this stuff again, actually. Okay, Kenny. Good. Stretch your arm out so it's barely touching the wall. Stay in your place, bend your arm back, and rub your elbow hard. Okay, okay. Okay, okay now stretch your arm back and see what happens. <laughs> okay. Something like this, I think, probably. Rub the elbow. Okay, hand. <laughs> Can you see that? What's that all about? I must have like leaned back while I was rubbing my elbow. Damn. I used to do that thing when I was a kid where you would, did you ever do it where you stand in a doorway and you push out like this and you just, no, let me try it. And you come out here and your arms just kind of, <laughs> If you've never, that is witchcraft. <laughs> I know it's just like simple scientific biology, mumbo jumbo, whatever. It's cool. Zoomers, welcome to Zoom Playhouse, where today we bring you the chin play. So then my wife tells me, no, the doctor didn't say you could jerk off whenever you want. He said, be careful, cause you could have a stroke at any time. <laughs> This is, this is so dumb. It's fluffy. It's got peanut butter. It's fluffy peanut butter dip. What's up, Zoomers? Today we're gonna make fluffy peanut, what is it, peanut butter fluff? What was it called? Fluffy peanut butter? Fluffy peanut, fluffy peanut butter dip. I'm going off of memory. I just watched it, so like, it shouldn't be that hard for me to do. This is like three ingredients. I think I should be okay. Half a cup of peanut butter. So let's just go ahead and let's fill this bad boy up, huh? All right, that's good enough. And now, and we go straight from there, right back into here. It's just that, so, so many steps. Baking is so many steps. <laughs> now that we did this step, now I have to wash this. That's just like an extra thing. Now this has to be washed. Yeah, get some nice, get some nice real, some real tight, some real tight shots. Let's do the, let's do the cool whip. We need another half cup of this. I almost feel bad busting into it. Doing good. Doing good, sweetie. Thanks, babe. I'm a sucker for Cool Whip. A little fun fact about me. You want any of this? All right, Zoomers. Next, we need eight ounces of yogurt. Wow, yogurt's good, huh? Yogurt is good. One of life's simple pleasures. You want some of this? I will later. Okay. <laughs> this is a piece of cake. Come on now. Piece of cake. Piece of cake, I said. Now this one's a little strange. They asked for one eighth teaspoon of cinnamon. Ooh, God, it smells like a Cinnabon in here now. All right, that should do it. Right on top. Now all we gotta do is mix this up. Now I've turned this, this absolutely simple, almost childlike recipe into 
this huge ordeal. It doesn't smell good. You know, I, I, th I thought it would smell better than it does. A whisk really would have got it. I'm, I'm, I'm mixing like, uh, like a, the way a two-year-old would do it. I'm just grabbing it like this. Hands starting to cramp up a little bit, I'll be honest. This is not as easy as it looks, folks, all right? You know, I do this so you guys don't have to. What should I dump in here? We've got, we've got a little spread. I guess I'll try it off. Let's start with a banana. Give it a little dip. I don't know if I like that. There's something sour about it. It's probably that yogurt, huh? Is that yogurt old? Well, maybe, well, let's just try a pretzel. Maybe a pretzel will, will be a little better. Uh-huh. Eh, I'm a little disappointed, actually. I thought this was a no-brainer. Strawberry seems like a weird one, huh? That one was okay. I think it's just because the strawberry was really good. See, this wouldn't have been my first choice. What? Of recipe. What do you mean? If I saw it on Pinterest, I wouldn't have made it. Oh, for crying out loud. I thought you were gonna like this. That's why I did it. It's not terrible. It's terrible. No. Oh. It's terrible. It's two out of 10, rather eat big heads. Look at how much there is. There's so much of this. We're not eating this. What a joke. There's our uh, peanut butter dip review. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. So many of my memories from when I was a kid are from birthday parties and doing fun projects at home and like youth group at church. And after spending some time the last couple of days browsing through old episodes of Zoom, I'm realizing how much of that stuff that I did as a kid was inspired by this show. A lot of my siblings and my birthday parties were just at home with some friends and we would play these games that we saw on Zoom because you know, my mom would watch it with us during the day and she knew how much we were obsessed with the show. I wanted to be Kenny for goodness sake. If you would have asked me at six or seven years old, who's your idol? Kenny from Zoom. <laughs> my parents were leaders at our summer VBS stuff and I distinctly remember playing some of these games at VBS. I'm almost positive if I looked hard enough through the boxes in my parents' basement, I would find the old silhouette tracings that we did as kids. We definitely did this. I can picture it in my head. We put it on like construction paper. It was black on construction paper. I vividly see it, guys. Zoom is easily one of the most important and influential shows that I ever had the pleasure of watching in my life. And it's all because we couldn't get cable. I'm kind of glad too. Like Nickelodeon was great. My wife loved watching Cartoon Network, but come on, man. Nothing compares to Zoom. Five stars. This show will enrich your child's worldview. Now that I said that, I'm actually realizing it's kind of funny because the one thing I wasn't crazy about with Zoom when I was a kid was the segments where the Zoomers would read fan mail. I was a sucker for all the games and science projects and stuff, okay? But now as an adult, I get a kick out of just listening to these kids talk to each other unscripted. If you could go back in time, what would you most want to see? I think I would go back to the ice age because cool. I love to like ice skate and that would be really fun. <laughs> No, on the ice age. Make a snowman, a giant snowman because there's so much snow. Buzz, you know snow still exists, buddy. You gotta visit North Dakota sometime. We had 11 blizzards this year. As a matter of fact, if I went outside, I probably would still be able to find snow somewhere. I think the biggest thing that this show did for me was unlock a curiosity about things that I didn't know I cared about when I was five or six years old. For goodness sake, this show had me counting the tiles on our bathroom floor when I'm sitting on the dang toilet. I'm looking for patterns like, oh, I think I could fill every square if I divided by the length of the wall and cut everyone in half mentally. My brother Greg has this weird ability to tell you how many letters are in any given word or phrase, or sentence, just immediately. You could be like, how many letters are in the Vikings are going to the Super Bowl? And instantly he'd be like, 32. 
Are you serious? Come on, quit playing. I'm telling you, it's because we watched freaking Zoom, dude. This show is insane. We're built different. I'm sorry, you can't keep up. Are there good shows like this that are still on for kids today? I don't know. I don't, I don't watch kids TV. I hope there is. I really hope that something like this still exists because it matters. It mattered to me. Look at me. Look, look at what it turned me into. Come on now. You want to be like me? I'm sorry. If you didn't watch Zoom as a kid, you can't be like me. And here I'm acting like nobody else watched PBS. Of course they did. I bet a majority of the people watching this video already know about this show. But if nothing else, here's just a little reminder at this beautiful gem from our childhood. You have no idea how much of a pain in the butt it was for me to get my hands on some of these shirts too. You'd think it'd be easy? It was not easy. But you know what is easy? Getting your hands on the new Struggler shirt, guys. Just a little merch plug for you. There's a bunch of stuff on the shop. Strugglershop.com, go check that out. All right, that's all I got for you today. Thank you so much for watching. A extra thank you to my patrons. Those that are listed here are in the top tier on there. Guys, this channel and all the fun videos you get to see are made possible by viewers like you. <laughs> I just came up with that myself. Pretty good tagline. I got a question for you before you go. Uh, do you know of any channels that average 800 to 900,000 views per video. I feel like it's so rare to find a channel like that. Either they're averaging over a million per video or they're averaging down where I am in like the, the couple hundred thousand range. The only one I've seen recently, I saw Philip DeFranco is kind of in that range where he, that's about as many views as he gets per video. So I just was interested, you know, if, if you guys know of any channels like that, let me know. All right, that's all I got for you this time. Thank you so much for watching again. Thank you for liking and subscribing as well. That means a lot to me. I will talk to you again very soon. Goodbye.